Hello and welcome to another episode of Jeff and Angie Photography. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. If not, I want to welcome all the newcomers. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe as usual and ring my bell so you know when I post a new video. So today we are going to be doing um, part two to the beginner's guide to Luminar Neo so you can learn the power of Neo. It's pretty incredible. Stay tuned. I'll teach you some more. All right, so here we are. We are going to start part two of discovering the power of Luminar Neo. So let's go ahead and jump into Neo and I will I found a couple images that we can go in and edit through <clears throat> excuse me the develop part of essentials so all together we're gonna end up with 10 videos maybe 11 depending on if I decide to combine two of the segments together but uh, some of them will be short some will be long but let's go ahead and get started all right, so here we are in Neo, and we're going to go ahead and we are going to select this image right here. Um, I took this when we were in Colorado this November. Um, so we have been very busy, and I'm sorry I didn't get these out sooner. We have been on probably about four or five trips since my last video I posted. And actually the last one I posted, I posted while we were in Africa and it took like five days to upload because the Wi-Fi was so slow. But here I am, I'm home, and this month is going to be the essential modular here. We're gonna go over each and every one of these segments Today we're going to be covering Develop Raw and why you want to start in Develop Raw. So I've chose this buck. So believe it or not, when I'm on vacation and I'm out taking photographs, I actually purposely take photos that are overexposed and underexposed just so I can share them on my YouTube channel so I can show you how powerful Neo is in bringing these back. Uh, so this buck right here, um, you can see that he is pretty much underexposed. So we are going to go into the develop raw modular, which is what we are going to go over today. That's all we're doing is just the develop. So what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and boost the exposure on this since I completely blew it. So I'm thinking maybe somewhere, maybe about one stop. So we'll go 1.01 because I can't get it exact. I guess I could if I typed it in. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring up some of the contrast. Kind of get maybe some of those greens in the background to kind of come out. And then we're going to take the highlights and we're going to bump them down just a smidgen. And then the shadows, we're going to open up the shadows. Probably quite a bit there. There we go. And then the next section in develop is your black and whites. And you can hit your J key and that will turn on the blacks where it shows that you have overexposed like so and if you double click on the adjuster bar it takes you back to where it started from and then whites if it's overexposed there we go you can see double click takes you back to zero all right so we're gonna take the blacks and we're gonna add a little bit of black to this image and the whites, we're going to bump the whites just a little. I don't want to go too much because I don't want to blow out this portion of the antler right through here. 
All right, and then we're going to jump down here to curves, which curves, you can use curves or you don't have to use curves. Um, I'm going to kind of show you a little example on how curves work. I, I personally don't do the red, the greens, and the blues. Um, I just do the shadows and the highlights. Um, and what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll, if you go in and you click once in the middle here, this is the center of your um, shadows. This center block, click the center of that line. That is your midtones. And this up here, if you click the center, that is your highlights. And that's the center of your highlights. So typically what I'll do is I'll just put one dot in the center of each of those. And I will just play with it to get it to where I like it. I kind of like that right there. It helps bring out the greens in the background. And then the mid-tones. Um, I don't know, maybe something like that. And then the highlights. See, if we take the highlights too much, we're going to get that red starting to pop out on that antler right there. So we don't want to take the highlights too bright but we also want to make sure we get as much detail as possible in this antler so we'll just kind of play with that maybe right there mid-tones something like that okay all right so he's looking pretty good here is your before and after. It does a really good job of bringing an image back. That is one thing that hopefully nobody can argue with. So we're going to take the temperatures. So we go into color. This is our next one. And then sharpness. We're going to, I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to close all of them because you can leave them open or you can close them. And for this, tutorial I'm going to do them closed. So the next one we're looking at is going to be color and this is still inside of your develop raw. Okay. So now we're in color and we're going to take this and so this is as it was shot. Um, the camera did a pretty good job of the white balance but I am going to maybe make it eh, no I like it as shot yeah and then tint I usually don't mess with tint but we'll kind of see if that brings out some more of those greens in the background kind of a little bit there we go a little and saturation I usually don't use saturation um, Saturation really takes everything and just like really, really just, I don't know, it just makes it super saturated. Now, vibrance, on the other hand, I will use vibrance. So there's a little bit of vibrance, 18, and there's zero. It's not a lot of difference, just a little. Well, you could add a little saturation if you wanted to. In my opinion, I kind of go negative. Kind of get rid of some of that orangey overtones that is going on. Okay, now we're going to jump down into sharpness. Now, because we're only working in the develop mod, um, I'm going to use the sharpening here. And we're going to zoom in to the eye on this buck here and we're going to typically I put it at about 50 and then the radius I usually back the radius off because it tends to soften everything too much okay so there's 50 there's zero and there's Fifty. 
All right, and that's, we'll leave that at that. And then we're gonna go ahead and jump in here to noise reduction, uh, which because we're working just in this develop modular, we're gonna use this noise reduction, but we're also gonna go up and we're gonna use the noise reduction uh, called noiseless. So you can kind of see the noise in the background there. And that's because the image was extremely underexposed. So we'll take the luminosity up to probably 50. You don't want to do too much because you don't want to soften your image, your subject. Because if you do too much, it will really just like soften everything. Of course, this isn't a very good example. I got a, I got a nice blurred spot there from a tall piece of grass. But it will definitely show you the power of Neo. All right, and then we're gonna go down here into optics. And this is something I use just about every single time. I use auto distortion and auto defringe and I use this ceramic aberration uh, sometimes. Um, it gets rid of the little, the little lines, red and purplish color lines that run along your images. But this image doesn't have really any of that, so I'm not going to apply it. And then transform, if you were doing um, like buildings and stuff, you could use this because it really really transforms your image. And it does horizontal as well. And it does your aspect. <laughs> Make him a fat deer. Make him a tall deer. All right, so that is the develop mod. And after that, I told you I was gonna take you up to noiseless and we're gonna run noiseless on low. And just like that, the noise is definitely muted. There you go. Here is your before and after. So what do you think? Is Neo powerful or what? So before you go, I want to jump over here to, I have a fundraiser going on right now to help fund my first publication of my book. I've been writing this book now for about two years. It is the Creative Guide to Nature Photography, What the F-Stop and More. And it goes over everything from exposure to how to photograph everything and anything in the nature world. And don't forget, Luminar Neo, Right now, if you decide to get Luminar Neo, you can type in my code AB15 at the link that will be below. Um, so there'll be two links below. There'll be one that'll take you into Neo to purchase it. Uh, if you want to purchase it, use AB15 and you can get 15% off. Or you can do a 14 day free trial and then if you decide to purchase it, then type in AB15 and you'll still get your 15% off. And I have a couple workshops coming up. I have one spot left in the Whooping Crane Photography Workshop from February 22nd to the 25th. I got a couple spots left on my South Texas Bird and Wildlife uh, down in the valley. Um, the valley would be very South Texas, down on the Mexican border. Uh, this place here is located just outside Hebronville. And then of course I do private workshops here in South Texas. Um, just click on that link there and you can go and schedule your time with me and it's one-on-one. -on -one. I can do up to three people. And then next fall, I have the Cotto Lake Fall Workshop coming up, uh, 7th through the 10th. That's gonna be another amazing trip. Um, I'm going to do a video on the last workshop that I just did. 
um, up in Cotter Lake. Um, even though it was gloomy, we still ended up with some pretty good pictures. All right, so don't forget to like and subscribe and go and click on the link above because it'll take you into the next video. Have a great day. All right, well, thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to like and subscribe and ring my bell so you will get notified the next time I post a video. Thanks for watching.